Hello everyone and welcome to Motorcast. I'm your host Joshua Sutil and earlier in the week I had the absolute pleasure of catching up with Louis Delatraz. Of course he will be racing in GP2 next year for racing engineering. He's going to be a big big name in the Formula 1 paddock over the next couple of seasons I am absolutely sure. Absolutely delightful guy as well which of course is absolutely great to see and uh, yeah well here's the interview. Hope you guys enjoy of course subscribe for more motorsport content and uh, yeah enjoy the interview. So obviously you've had a long 2016 then, uh, how have you been enjoying some time of racing and uh, your winter so far? Uh, yeah, 2016 was a, a long but good season, I'm very happy about it. Um, now it's obviously Christmas time and holidays time, so time to take a rest. Uh, obviously we, we keep training and uh, just yeah working on 2017. And obviously you've had, like you said, a pretty long 2016, but quite a lot of highlights in there. What would you say was the the, the best moment of that long season? Yeah, 2016 was, was so great because the Formula V8 was the, my main championship. Uh, was I, I'm came, I came from the Formula Renault 2.0, uh, so it was quite a big step. Uh, and I, I joined the category. It's a big car, very, a lot of downforce, carbon brakes. I mean, it's so close to Formula One, and uh, I came to my first race and, and won it. So I think that was not really expected, and uh, so I think that's definitely one of the highlights of the year. But we've been strong all year and been fighting for the championship until the last race. We never gave up, and I think with, with Fortec, uh, they gave me a car that could be on the podium every weekend, and that was so great to just go to every race and and fight for the top. Yeah, it must have been, and you certainly, you certainly took that opportunity. I mean, nine podiums, two race wins, 230 points. Pretty pretty impressive for, for a rookie year. I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I always, when I join a category, I always target. I mean, the target for me is always to win. But um, we, we know that it's not always easy when you have to learn everything, uh, especially against such experiment drivers. So um, it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Probably one of my best years so far. And of course, then at the end of the year, you made your debut, of course, into GP2. Um, and this leads us on to the first question, of course, from the from the fans. And this one's from Vais Kuba. And he says, the uh, GP2 and the 3.5 cars look similar. Um, but which car do you enjoy the most? And uh, which one is the, the easier of the two to drive? Although I guess it's going to be which ones are the less difficult to drive. <laughs> uh, yeah, the GP2 and the Formula V8 are looking similar. Uh, there's... Obviously, quite a lot of difference, but uh, speed-wise, it's quite the same. Mm, the main difference, to be honest, is the the tires, because we drive with Michelin in the V8 Formula, and with Pirellis in the um, in the GP2, the same than Formula One. Uh, the Pirelli is the is very hard to learn. It's a strange tire that has a lot of degradation. Um, I think that's one of the hardest things I say to to adapt coming from the Formula V8, because the speed is not a, a problem. Uh, the cornering speed and the speed uh, the speed in the straight is pretty similar. So um, yeah, I would say I enjoyed a lot the Formula V8, and I still need to uh, let's say drive more and uh, understand a bit more the GP2. But it is definitely a nice car, and it, I think it has a lot of potential. Next question is from Lachlan, and he wants to know what are your targets for your debut GP2 season? Of course, you recently announced that you'll be driving for Racing Engineering next season. Of course, you did compete. Um, in the postseason test, of course, for the Spanish team, what role did that play in uh, in choosing to sign for them for for 2017? Um, yeah, I've been following GP2 all season. I mean, as well, driving in Formula V8, uh, uh, Racing Engineering has been a very good team last few years. Uh, they won it with Fab- Fabio Leimer, and um, then finished second, I think, every year in the team <laughs> championship. So they definitely are very consistent, and uh, I've I've met them quite long ago and I really enjoyed them so we decided to do the test together in Abu Dhabi the three days went very well and uh, that's why we we carried on together I think it's the best option for me and I'm I'm very happy to be to be there so let's about the objectives I think it's uh, as I said before when I join something I mean I'm I'm coming to to try and win I will do everything to do it again being a rookie is uh, difficult in GP2 because we don't have a lot of track time but I will do my best to work with the team, work together and make the most out of it. So race wins, obviously, and if we can fight for the championship, I, I will be there. And we've got another question as well from that channel. One, uh, I'm going to lump it in with another one as well from Toby. It's demotivating to see younger drivers such as Lance Stroll enter Formula 1 
based on their bank balance. Of course, with skill there involved as well. But is it is that a problem for you for finances and seeing other drivers, you know, kind of jump the ladder? Well, we all know that um, money is important in that sport. I mean, it mm-hmm. helps a lot. Uh, it, the junior categories are very expensive, so you need to find sponsors. I'm lucky with the one I have now. They support me since long time, and the result we had together motivates everyone so we can make it. Uh, obviously, there is uh, other ways to get into Formula 1, like bringing a lot of money, uh, and it's getting, I think, worse and worse. But to be fair, uh, Lance Stroll did a very good job in the junior categories. Mm-hmm. And yes, he have the money, but as well, he is driving well. Uh, he did very good. I mean, he won everything he's been in, even if he had the best conditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is the super license points that you need to have to race in Formula 1. He has them. So I think, I mean, yes, uh, money has played a role, but he did everything right as well. So there is this new rule with super license points to avoid any very, very rich driver to join. And I mean, that doesn't have the result. So that will make a selection and I'm happy to have those points now. So if the opportunity comes, I will be here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's talking about backing and kind of um, a helping hand, what, what role has been working with Renault played in, played in the success of 2016? How much has that helped and given you a major confidence boost? Well, I, I joined the, the junior program from Renault. Um, we did the, the year together. Obviously, they helped me uh, quite a bit, uh, a lot of for training, and uh, obviously I came quite a lot to Enstone, so that was a good thing, and I think it, it did play a, a part of the success during the year. And the next question is from T Moore, 0288, and he wants to know <laughs> what number would you choose if you got an F1 seat in the future? Well, I do, I do like special numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not. It's not like if I don't have it, I feel bad. But <laughs> if I can choose one, I will take the 22. Uh, I'm born on the 22th April, the 22nd of April, sorry. And um, well, I've been racing karting with the 22. And if I go to F1, obviously, I will try to get that. Uh, I think Button, Jensen Button, had it until now. Yeah. Oh, that's I all right then. Don't, yeah, I <laughs> don't know if good. anyone picked it up but I don't think Toffel von Dorn took it so uh, let's see <laughs> yeah I don't think anyone's gone for it for 2017 so it's uh, it's, it's available for now I think for, for 2018 or 2019 um, and that does lead on to the next question as well um, do you have a do you have a target year for getting to Formula 1 is it just kind of taking every year as it comes really well it's always hard to say um, but I, I hope obviously as quick as possible um, We've been. I took. I took time. I'm quite young, so I made it. I made every category I called in the junior single seater and only went up when it was needed, after a, a successful year. So um, maybe I don't know. Depends as well of the result I will have in GP2. Uh, obviously, if I win GP2 next year, it opens doors. Uh, you never know what what can happen. So for me, the main focus is really to to do a good year in GP2. Focus on my on my job. Um, and then yeah, see see what what comes. And the next question then is from Kimi Martinez, and uh, they want to know how much of his influence was your dad in uh, getting you started in racing and uh, along your your journey so far. It was a, a big influence. Um, I'm kind of born on a racing track, if I can say. So <laughs> <laughs> I probably was. I don't even remember it. Probably was one or two years old when I came to my first race track really? or even wow. race seven. <laughs> So, you know, it's like those kind of smells of tires of fuel burning that you just always remember. And when you come at the track, you just feel at home because of this. So, uh, yeah, it is because of him. I'm in motorsport and I, and I love it. It's not he didn't force it. I pushed for it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, in terms of getting started, was it 2008, according to Wikipedia, that you started casting? Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. But I did. Uh, until 10, my father didn't want me to race in, in karting, actually, because he proved I was too too young. So we made, um, I don't know if that's the right term in English, but is it called like soapbox? It's, uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like what I put together, kind of uh, <laughs> it car, is, uh, you know, homemade. Yeah, yeah. It, it homemade cars, downhill, <laughs> and the winching. And uh, I started at 8, so 2006, I think, but that was not really racing. It was just more fun and yeah. uh, then I came to 10 years old and I said uh, that, that now it's time to, to move <laughs> <laughs> and coming on to a few kind of Formula 1 related questions we got one from Sinan and he wants to know if you could choose any F1 car from you know any time present or past 
Uh, which one would you like to drive the most and why? Well, that's a hard question. I think they have, there is a lot of nice cars in Formula 1, but the, the McLaren from Senna is probably one of the the nicest cars I've mm-hmm. seen with the Marlboro colors. Uh, and uh, I will see the, the Ferrari from one of the Ferraris from Michael Schumacher will be will be nice too. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of cars and that for next year, of course, we all know that Formula One's undertake, undertaking a big revolution of you. You know, what's your what's your opinion on the the new regulations for next year? Well, I haven't seen a proper finished car. I've seen quite a lot of uh, concept <laughs> and ideas also yeah. on on the Formula One simulator, seen some times and interesting uh, <laughs> things about it. So I think it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it is a good thing. Uh, the car is going quicker and that's what, what we want. Um, hopefully the, the tire will be holding enough to that everyone can race together, that we don't have to wait on the tires. That's mm-hmm. my, my main hope because obviously as a racing driver, I want to try to go as fast as I can every lap and not look too much after them. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> I think it, it they will look good for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got the penultimate question then from Jordan. Um, he wants to know if you could eat dinner with any um, three past or present F1 drivers, who would they be and why? Um, that's also an odd one. Tough but one. Yeah, there's a lot to choose from in there. <laughs> I think right now I will take um, Daniel Ricciardo, uh, Sebastian Vettel, and, and Romain Grosjean. Mm-hmm. I, I know Roma already, and I know he's a really nice and fun guy. So. That's already one. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo is obviously everyone sees him. He looks like a uh, good fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I had the the chance to to see Sebastian Vettel once. Uh, he was a really nice guy with me. So he didn't know me obviously, but uh, he was really he nice spend time with me. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully I can race <laughs> against him years, one day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's on the current grid. I will take those three. <laughs> Um, and this is one from Matthew Bolton then the last question he wants to say well do you have a, a big arrival in motorsport is there a certain driver that keeps on cropping up every, every series you enter they, they kind of follow you into mm, not not really uh, I usually have a very good relation with all the with ma- mainly all drivers but uh, well I didn't really have a rival that followed me all over no, obviously but... there was always one every year but mm-hmm. we always had good relations, so out of the track is good, on track is uh, another thing, but it's like it Tom is, Dillon. it's like it should be. Yeah, yeah <laughs> also, but I would say um, Kevin York, my teammate at um, Kaufman in Formula Renault 2.0. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's even harder when you're in the same team and fighting for a championship, but it was always fair and always had good relation and work, work together to make the car quicker, so I think that's that's what you, you aim for. And that's nice when you're the one winning as well in the end. But yeah. <laughs> it, it must be good though, because it was a, a Swiss one, a Swiss one too, wasn't it? In in that championship, I believe. Exactly, so. it was a Swiss one too. So it was important to be, let's say, the one winning. But we always <laughs> were very fair mm-hmm. to each other, and there was no no tension between us. And we're still very good friends now. So which is what I enjoy. In also in motorsports, you, you meet nice people, or well, most of the people are, are quite nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And was was that Hockenheim weekend one of your best? That that, that you know that weekend that rounded off it your, was, your championship winning year. Yeah, it was pretty amazing because I I did come to the last race in Hockenheim with a big lead in the championship, but there was three races and uh, the German weather did not make it like <laughs> with easy. <laughs> yeah. So I had um, the qualifying went very well, had triple positions. Uh, so it couldn't be more happy than that. And uh, then obviously I won race one uh, and I proof I was champion, but no, I, w- I was missing only one point. So um, I was I had to stay focused and make sure I didn't make any mistake and score that point. And it was raining and I won that race as well. So it was just amazing. And then I won the third race knowing that I was already champion. So basically a perfect weekend and it was the best way to, to end it. Yeah, well, I hope you have many more of those in 2017. Thank you so much for coming Thank you. On. I it, will try. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure. I really do wish Thanks you Thanks a lot to you. Yeah, I, I, I wish you the best of luck for 2017. It should be a, a great year. I mean, you obviously, like you said, you've seen GP2 this season. It was pretty, pretty hectic at times. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you, it was. You, you know from Abu Dhabi as well. So, uh, 
Yeah. yeah, Abu Dhabi was my debut, and it was quite interesting. Obviously, we knew we couldn't expect anything, not knowing course, the track yeah. and, Every, and everyone's been the there all the year. Tire. Yeah, exactly. So. And, and, you, and you're coming in for that for that race, but I, I guess it was a good first race, you know, just at the end of the year, and then you, you can go into next year at least with that. Is it, that's what you did with um, 3.5, wasn't you? Like a yeah, guess, exactly. Like a guest I did the, kind of one of the yeah. rounds in the Red Bull Ring, mm-hmm. and then uh, then obviously again. Do it. You have no chance when you're just of going course, for yeah, yeah. a one-off, but I mean it paid off because I came to my first race and I knew more or less what I was doing. So it, uh, I think it, it is definitely a part of why I won the first race in this year. Maybe I wouldn't have happened if uh, if I wasn't uh, ready. Yeah, we'll see what happens in Bahrain or Barcelona or wherever the season's going to start. We'll have to wait and see. When, when I really wish it's the same, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Um, it's no worries, a... and pleasure for me as well. And uh, yeah, if you need anything, just let me know. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good evening. You too.